Hello, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, my name is Abiodun Anifoshe. Thanks for stopping by and consider subscribing and share this channel to your friends and loved ones. This is going to be a very short video. I'm just going to be talking about the nomenclature of benzene and its derivatives. So in organic chemistry, when we talk about benzene, we're talking about this structure right here. And it can also be written out this way. with formula molecular formula C6H6 and oftentimes you see benzene written this way or maybe sometimes you see benzene written this way with this ring inside the benzene and that is because these pi electrons are moving around they are delocalized they don't have a fixed location in organic chemistry when you have a double bond the one of the bonds is usually a sigma bond and the other is the pi bonds so the pi electrons are always moving around in benzene and that is why we say benzene ele pi electrons are delocalized into the ring and so when you start having functional groups when you start having functional groups on benzene functional groups so with the functional groups can be different functional groups actually so it can be an hydrosyl group it can be an amino group it can be a cyano group so Depending on the functional groups that you have, then that will determine the name. So in this case, we have a hydrosyl group. So this becomes hydrosyl benzene. And the trivial name for this is phenol. And if you have something like this, with a functional group amino, amino is NH2, then that becomes amino benzene or the trivial name which is aniline and if you have some if you have something like this with cn which is usually written this way in this uh, structural formula so with cn you say you have a cyanobenzene cyanobenzene so these are all derivatives of benzene but then when you start having other uh, substituents that are attached to this uh, to the ring in the derivatives of benzene, then you think starts getting a little bit complex. And if you have something like this, just one key thing uh, to the naming convention is that you focus on the functional group. You prioritize on the functional group. So if let's say you have a chloro group here, you have a an isopropyl group here. And I mean, to name this, it's not that difficult. Just make sure that the functional group, the carbon to which the functional group is attached is the first carbon. It's labeled as the, as the first carbon. And then this second one, uh, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, sixth carbon. And so this compound is going to be, uh, is going to be having the chloro group on the second carbon position and the isopropyl group on the fourth carbon position. I mean, you, that is going this way. If you consider going this way, it's going to put our isopropyl still on the fourth carbon, but then it's going to put our chloro group on the sixth carbon. And that will mean going this way will put, leave us with uh, two chloro and uh, four isopropyl, two chloro, four isopropyl phenol right but if you go this way it's going to leave us with uh six chloro four isopropyl phenol so if you add this together the locants the the location of the substituent here is going to be eight and, and here to is going say to be six. ten so this leaves us with the least number of locants on this molecule and that's why we're going to go with this nom this nomenclature so it's going to be two chloro four isopropyl phenol and another thing in the naming of derivatives of benzene is that most uh, most time you see something like this so let's say this is where the functional group is so this position this second positions are known as i mean if okay let me just say so this is auto this is meta this is para, this is um, meta, this is auto. 
But if you've named this as 2, then this has to be 6. So you can have both of them 2 at the same time if you are using the IUPAC nomenclature, right? So that is how that is. So uh, just like, okay, so let's look at this uh, very cool example. So uh, this compound, a phenol, but then we have an amino group here. But this is going to just, if it's just this, it's going to be 4 amino phenol. But then the, cap, the actual compound I'm trying to draw is an acetyl amino phenol. So we have an acetyl group that is a substituent in the amino group of this phenol molecule. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this acetyl amino group is on the fourth carbon. And we say if we have the fourth carbon in benzene derivative, we say that is para position. So this compound is going to be, is actually para acetyl amino phenol. And in, interestingly, this is what we call the paracetamol. 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 The popular paracetamol uh, drug, I mean, well, medication that we use. So this is paracetamol and it's because it is para on the, the fourth carbon. Acetyl, that is this acetyl group. Amino, that is the amino. And the phenol, that is the phenol. So the para is here. The acetyl, para acetyl is acetyl. The, am the amyl here is basically the AM is representing the amino and the OL is representing the phenol. So this is para, para acetyl amino phenol and it is the brand uh, paracetamol that we, uh, that we know. And that is uh, a derivative of benzene. This, the whole of this is a derivative of benzene. And it's interesting that we can have things getting really complex from here. But they all follow the same convention of naming benzene derivatives. And that will be the uh, short video I have for you today. And I hope to see you in the next class. Thank you. And please subscribe if you have not done so. And share this channel with your friends and loved ones. Thank you again and see you in the next lecture. Bye.